let's dive into the lower extremity. So this would be the right leg and the left leg on our cat specimen. And uh, the first one I wanna show is this muscle that we've actually cut. This is the sartorius. And you'll notice on the kitty, it's actually much wider um, than it is, or it takes up more space on the leg than it does in humans. So um, when you see this kind of flat muscle, it is more on the medial side. That is the sartorius. And the reason why we cut it is because the quadriceps femoris group is here. So remember the quad refers to four. There are four muscles. The only ones we can see here are the vastus lateralis, the rectus femoris, and the vastus medialis. But together, um, uh, those make part of the quadriceps group. If you're curious about the inner muscles, here this would be the, uh, this is the gracilis right here. We have the semi-tendinosis, the semi-membranosis. This is that adductor longus. And then we only see a very small portion, just that teeny bit right there, that is going to be the pectineus on our cat. So remember those make up the major adductor muscles. On the anterior side here, this is going to be our tibialis anterior. I have flipped our kitty cat over. So now we're looking on the back sides of the legs. Just a quick reminder, because of the terminology I'm going to use on a quadruped, remember because a kitty walks on four legs that this is actually the superior surface. Underneath is the inferior surface. That would be anterior towards the head. This is posterior or caudal towards the tail. So I'm gonna start anteriorly and then move our way uh, posteriorly and inferiorly um, down the, the lower extremity. So the first one I want to show is this large gluteus medius right here. You can see that kind of runs on the sides as it does for us. And then on kitty cats, it's a little bit different. This smaller muscle right here is actually the gluteus maximus. So as always, whenever we have something that's different from what we have, pay extra attention so that if you're tested on this, it doesn't trick you. So this large one right here, this would be the right gluteus medius, which makes this the right gluteus maximus. So just maybe think on the cat, oh, the maximus is actually the smaller one. This muscle right here is actually a muscle called the caudofemoralis. You don't need to know that, but um, just point that out so you don't confuse that. It's just this one and this one. For my students, at least, those are the only two you need to be able to distinguish. Um, moving along, okay, this is actually our biceps femoris. Okay, our very large biceps femoris. This was that uh, semi-tendinosis that I showed you on the other side. And we've cut through the biceps femoris, which is part of the hamstrings group. When we start the nervous system, you will become familiar with this again. Just a preview, this is that very large sciatic nerve, which we see on the posterior side. So working our way inferiorly, this is going to be the uh, gastrocnemius. There's another muscle, just if you're curious for humans, it's called the soleus muscle. And really, and that's what this one is right here. Um, a lot of people, when they think of the calf, we just think of the gastrocnemius, but it's actually the gastrocnemius and the soleus really play important roles in um, our posture and then that plantar flexion. This smaller, thin muscle right here, that is going to be the peroneus longus. So this one that I have right here, 
This is the peroneus longus or the fibularis longus as you learned in the human. In the human, we also call that the peroneus longus. So just think peroneus longus is the same thing as the fibularis longus. And the way that you can remember that is that the fibula, we're on the lateral side of the leg right here. And remember the fibula is the lateral bone and it's very skinny, just like that muscle. So hopefully that helps you distinguish the uh, muscles of the leg. We're looking at the dorsum of the kitty. Remember that the dorsum of the cat is the superior side because it's a quadruped. So there's some big major muscles I'd like to show you here. Um, first, we have the um, very large latissimus dorsi, and there will be two of them. We've got um, the right latissimus dorsi. Okay, you can actually see some of this um, tissue here, which is kind of interesting. This is called the lumbodorsal fascia, but that's what helps kind of keep this down. So this is going to be the right latissimus dorsi. This is going to be the left latissimus dorsi. Then anterior to that, remember anterior on a kitty cat goes this way towards the head we have the trapezius. And the trapezius has three parts to it, just like it does in a human. Um, you know, for my students, you just have to know um, trapezius, that's fine. But um, if, if you're curious, um, this part right here, uh, the, the more posterior part, this is the spinotrapezius. And then we have the acromiotrapezius, which is kind of the mid part. And then we have this part up here called uh, the clavotrapezius. But again, this whole area right here, remember the trapezius is this rhomboid or kite-shaped muscle, major back muscle. Other muscles that we could see from the dorsal view is the uh, triceps brachii. So this would be the left, and then the right would be in that same area. You could see that we've kept the fascia on this one. On this one, though, we've separated it. This is the ventrum of our kitty, so let's look at some uh, belly muscles. Um, right here, we have a very large left external oblique. You can see how thin that is, but it kind of folds over like a sheet of paper. So on both sides, those would connect to this midline portion, which is the rectus abdominis. Um, for those that may be curious, if we reflect this external oblique back, we have a couple more muscles here. This is actually part of the internal obliques. And then we have the transversus abdominis right here. You kind of think they, they uh, run perpendicular to that rectus abdominis there. So now we're up towards the anterior part of the, ki of the kitty. Um, here we have the large pectoralis major. So this would be the right pectoralis major. Um, this muscle right here is actually called the sternomastoid. So different from us where we have a sternocleidomastoid this uh, muscle only connects to the sternum and the mastoid process on the cat remember in humans sternocleidomastoid means it connects to the sternum clavicle and the mastoid process so that's another one of those little differences that you should be aware of and this is what it looks like on the kitty this is where we would find the biceps brachii. This little muscle right here is, is a different one. It's called the clavobrachialis. Um, my students, you don't need to know that, so make sure you're just thinking, okay, this bigger one, that's the biceps brachii. This is part of the triceps brachii. There are more muscles than that, but just remember that tri meaning three. We've got three heads of the triceps brachii. For my students, just know triceps brachii. And then, um, let's see, up here we have the um, masseter. 
Another muscle I'd like to point out here is this serrated muscle. This is called the serratus ventralis. Remember, ventral because it's belly side. On us, we call this the serratus anterior because this is the anterior side on bipeds, on humans. So serratus refers to kind of serrations, and when you see all these little serrations, I guess you could say, I think that is the serratus ventralis. So quick review, serratus ventralis, the left serratus ventralis. Over here, this is the, uh, this would be on this particular specimen, the right pectoralis major. We've got the left uh, sternomastoid, the left masseter, left biceps brachii, left triceps brachii. Want to stay up to date on my latest videos? Please hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to check my Instagram page at The Anatomy Gal. See you next time.